Objective Truth. Well, cheers to you, sir. Boom. I dolled mine up a little bit today. Look at you go. Look at you go. I love that. Well, that's, that's a nice little flavor there. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there because it's always better when the lemon's inside. Yeah, it is. It's, it's always better when it's inside you. You know what I mean? It's like a mean cock. There we Slice go. Lemon in your, in, your, in your cocktail. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Stiff Truth. <laughs> I am Scott Castelnova. I'm here with my co host, Bobby West. It is a um, it's a fun show we got lined up here today, Bob. It's all it's it's very energetic. There's a lot of action here. There's there's sporting to this show. Am I right here? How you doing? Action! Look at him go! Look at him go! Look at him go! Whoa! 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 No, uh, a, a lot has gone on in the last week, um, and uh, and I'm not talking about you know geopolitics or or domestic politics or any of that nonsense. There's actual real news that has mm-hmm. gone on in the last week that doesn't involve, you know, countries or governments at all. So uh, I've been pretty excited to watch the Olympics. The Olympics uh, is fun, buddy. I, I mean, mean, getting the fuck down with that. How about you? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've really enjoyed the Olympics. The Olympics is so great because it's uh it's it's so stretched out and it's it's so much longer than a regular game that you can watch, you know, as as a spectator. You know what I mean? It's like this. What is it like the the second of February to the twentieth? It's a good eighteen days of just action packed fun. So that that's great. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting stuff, some really fun stuff. We'll, we'll definitely get into that. But before we touch on that and some other things here, what the hell are you drinking today? Because it looks fantastic over there. Well, today, kitties. We are having a, a go-go juice. Yeah, this girl. is what daddy makes me go-go. Right? This is our go-go <laughs> juice. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a long. Yeah, and you know us at the Stiff Truth. We are fans of, oh, we are fans of the long. <laughs> this is very true in more ways than one kids. But yeah, I mean, it just so if anybody doesn't know, you should know if you're an avid listener, which we have so many of. Um, but a long drink is basically when you kind of feel like a mad scientist back there and you've got the, we'll call them the four horsemen, right? The, the four major booze is back there when you're just like, Hey, let me get some of that vodka, some of that gin, some of that tequila, some of that rum, maybe some other shit, mix it together. And boom, bam, you've usually got yourself a pretty stiff, mean cocktail with a nice little punch to it. And this one is no different. It's exactly just that with a little bit more, a little bit of, oomph, so to speak. So you got, you got a half ounce, if I'm correct, vodka, gin, rum tequila and then then and then a half ounce this is this is the um the 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 curveball so to speak to the regular long drink then we throw a half ounce of blue carousel that's why we got that <laughs> gorgeous what we were talking about earlier bob you throw blue curacao and orange juice in a drink and all of a sudden you've got you've got like the florida the florida ocean floor like a like a nice shallow tropical ocean floor look it's really quite breathtaking but it's got the half ounce of blue curacao, then a half ounce of orange juice, then my friend, an ounce of sour mix. That's right. Shake that bitch up like Michael J. Fox, and then pour that into a nice tall glass with ice and top that bitch off with a little lemon lime soda. And if you're like Bob over there, you brought, you've got the window dressing too, and you throw a little lemon garnish on there. Nice drink though. Very, very good. Very similar to an adios motherfucker. Very that's similar. the one remember i was thinking about it before i was like an electric lemonade no i was like uh blue balls no 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 no. it's not it you're absolutely right an adios motherfucker in fact i can't remember what's in an adios motherfucker i believe that's on our website though it's almost uh, the same it's almost the same drink. interesting i don't know the, the the difference between the two and i was told there would be no math so i'm not going to <laughs> i'm not going to do that work right now but uh but a very that. very good drink and this is one that that you get to bust out for people that you're gonna get it's gonna be well received no, by no no matter who really gets this drink yeah uh, the only person that's not gonna like this drink is that hard up i just drink you know scotch neat or whiskey neat and that's all i drink that person's obviously not gonna like this drink but everyone else because it, it's it's a pretty dank cocktail but it's also sweet and flavorful 
So you're gonna get those people that don't like the boozy cocktails, but they like to drink their uh, their mimosas and and, and their 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 whatevers, their their sea breezes and whatever, right? So Let's just face it, they're drinking Zima. Okay, that's what they're right. fucking drinking right yeah. there. <laughs> you got your lighter cocktail drinkers are are, are going to enjoy this. Your more dank uh, drinkers are going to enjoy this. I, I think this is a this is a good go to to bust out a, a, if you have a, if you're having a dinner party, you have the company, you bust this out, and everyone's like really impressed with your skills, and you make this great drink that they've never had. And uh, I, I really like this one. Uh, this is a this is a good one. Good find, yeah. Scott. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Absolutely. I know, you know, I kind of like was back there just cooking this one up, but you're absolutely right. I actually see it as a great drink on a just a everyday Tuesday morning, too. You know what I mean? Just you and the wife getting ready for work, <laughs> mix up a couple of these bad boys, get that go-go juice on the road, right? Nothing will, nothing will fix your morning commute right up. <laughs> It'll like do some go-go juice guaranteed stiffies it'll do something to your morning commute um and you know what you had mentioned something here and i'm just going to go ahead and say this what's with the guys that are so adamant about just having their whiskey neat is that like really is it is it like a tough guy thing is it a machismo kind of thing because honestly i understand here's here's technically what i understand oh you don't want to add like any ice or anything like that because you're going to dilute the you know the taste and the the, the you know the, the taste profiles or whatever and you, you don't want to lose that yeah, but I also like my drinks cold. I, I, I'm I'm a Scotch Rocks guy. That's just the way it is. And I've, I've, I've been combated, though, with some people that get pretty fucking shitty with me about having their whiskey or their Scotch. Meat. It's, it's funny how those those folks will die on that hill, right? Like, they will. This is, this is it. I have to taste my 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 expensive whiskey. This is a sixty dollar bottle. You're like, slow down, slow down there, money bags for Monopoly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this is like a two three hundred dollar bottle, a hundred percent, right? You go ahead and throw that on there. But if you're telling me that a couple of ice cubes and a little bit of water is is going to ruin your scotch, and you're not going to be able to taste that Highland, you know, uh, 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 smoky flavor uh, because you're diluting it or whatever. Get the fuck out of here. That's, That's the trash. stiff truth right there. Uh, now, again, if it's a two or $300 bottle and it's a special occasion, you're down. Uh, we're, we're sharing a drink for whatever the fuck reason, right? You thought I was going to say something sexual right there, but I didn't. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, and uh, I was hoping you would, I was actually hoping you would. But. And, and, and at the, at the, the most case, if you want to taste that, I get it. You know, that's a, a rare drink that you save in your liquor cabinet. Um, <sighs> At that case, you have it neat, or you put a, a, a cold stone in there or something like that. Ooh, cool. I have some of you those. You still get it so cold, you, right? cold yeah. but it doesn't water it down, yeah. right? So so that's cool. Uh, but, uh, I mean, other than that, if it's just like your normal, like, 12 year or something, you're not going to kill no one for throwing a couple of ice cubes in there and enjoying your scotch a little bit more. I just like cold beverages. That's that's my thing. Um, I don't know if there's anything beverage-wise that I prefer lukewarm. Do you know what I mean? It's either fucking piping hot, or ice cold that that's my beverage choice right there and i'll tell you what for those guys out there that say you know what hey easy buddy this is like a special occasion bottle this is a hundred two hundred dollar bottle of scotch or whatever you know what i do just to be a total prick just like you know kind of like the idea of crashing lamborghinis and stuff like that is i go ahead and i open one of those bottles i pour a little out for my homies real quick just to be a dick you know what i'm saying that's just how mix it on up with like a diet <laughs> coke or some sour mix <laughs> and just tell looking right in the eye like it takes the bite out a little <laughs> That's how I roll. I want to, <laughs> I want to experience this amazing beverage with something I'm familiar with, like Coca Cola. <laughs> You've like, got that two hundred dollar bottle of scotch. Oh, okay. <sighs> Do you got any sour mix? I, I just don't like drinking trash whiskey. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. This is definitely a crowd pl pleaser. I'm. You know, it's it's one thing, Bob. Huge takeaway for both you and I. I'm sure. I'm just going to go ahead and speak for you here. I think we've mentioned this before, but it is really fun. The amount that we've learned on just what to do behind the bar. We've quite, we've, we've learned our way around, the, you know, uh, around the bar, so to speak. And I think it's a priceless uh, skill to build my, my friend. That's just me because, and, and I'm granted, we started this podcast literally right before the pandemic. So we haven't been doing a lot of dinner parties lately in the last couple of years, but when we do, my friend, it's we're going, on, right? We're, we're going to impress. That's all I'm saying, man. I mean, there's, there's a lot of impressing that we're going to be doing behind the bar and I'm excited to get there. So by the way, I'll see you. We're going to have to practice next month when I see you and the next month. 
That's right. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, I'll be about half the man that you saw last time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's just put that under wraps right now. I, I want a big reveal for the stiffies and we want to, we need to go like six months down the road if you want to, but I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be fun. It'll be a, a great before and after kind of thing. I do want to just go ahead and pivot from that real quick here. And I want to say, we talked about this. I want to make, I want to make an apology. Um, I got a little worked up last week um, and I'm talking specifically about our conversation that we had around essentially canceling Whoopi Goldberg. She said some crazy shit. She said some stuff that's obviously not true, but it was her opinion. And if anybody didn't listen to the last show, first of all, shame on you. Get in there and check it out. It's a dandy of an episode, but essentially we're talking about, you know, Whoopi's little gaffe that she had saying that the Holocaust wasn't about racism. Um, I did get pretty worked up last week about it. I, I said I hated Whoopi. I said that she should be basically erased from the view. She should be fired, all this kind of stuff. And I will give credit where credit is due. I'm going to go ahead and say it here. This wasn't an original thought of mine, but after I cooled down, I actually listened to one of the latest Joe Rogan episodes where he's got, um, he's got, uh, is it Smith? Is it um, Dave Smith on there? A uh, libertarian that I really love. So I definitely wanted to tune in. And they're talking about some crazy stuff and they get right into it. And just listening to those two guys kind of have empathy and have perspective from Whoopi Goldberg's standpoint. And also how the view, how that show actually works. And I had to, I had to actually hear it from some other people because like you and I talked about, Bob, I'm not a fan of the view. I think it's a shitty, shitty show. But I understand that this is a show where people are just spouting their opinions. They're people that actually have no expertise in what they're talking about. We understand that personally. Um, but then I kind of took a step back and I realized, you know what, Scott, it's okay for Whoopi Goldberg to get out there and say some stupid shit. I mean, that's kind of what I think of Whoopi anyways. I don't really like her that much. I never really have. I don't even really like her as an actress that much, but I shouldn't just jumped right out of the gun and said, you know what? I don't like what that person said. They need to be canceled. They're not allowed to say anything that I don't agree with. That's wrong. I don't need to do that, especially when it's an opinion piece on an opinion show. I should just continue doing what I do. And that's just not watch the view if I don't want to watch it. That's how I deal with that. That's how I quote unquote protest it is just my indifference. Just go the other direction. So I want to apologize to Whoopi and all the Whoopi lovers out there. I don't think she should be canceled. I think she should still have her job on The View. I will just continue not enjoying The View. Bob, what do you think? I'll never know if she still <laughs> keeps her job on The View. <laughs> just like I never knew that she was still on The View <laughs> before this. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it, after 25 years or whenever she joined The View 20 years ago or whatever, I don't think she was there when it started. She joined later, but um, you talk every day for an hour. You're going to say something retarded. Uh, it's just, it's bound to happen. Um, and and this is her moment. And it's not like what she said was like completely dumb. Uh, it, she just like left off the other, like the rest of it, the context of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, and, and I think you had mentioned it um, offline, uh, off camera, um, in a conversation that we had had because believe it or not not everything's recorded which is a fucking shame yeah because some I mean, of our gold is just me and you on the wall but anyway we would be a lot more popular <laughs> and we'd probably bo both be in prison or just completely canceled ourselves if everything was recorded but it'd be good it'd be good shit then. that's all i gotta say well uh and just that you had said you had mentioned that the format of the show all these women are, are, are there and they're trying to get their, their shit out and they're trying to talk to each other and everyone's trying to be the most important and be heard and get that, 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 that line, that one liner in and that to get their point in. And in the heat of the moment, she was probably scrambling just to get her sentiment out there on the idea that she probably forgot that that's going to sound stupid if she doesn't finish that thought. And she didn't finish the thought and it did and it indeed sounded stupid. And then uh, I also had pointed out something else too. Um, how Whoopi Goldberg's situation is a little bit more unique than, say, you or I or Joe Rogan. Um, we have very little oversight, obviously. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so, so we can say whatever the fuck we want and pretty much get away with it. Uh, but not so much for her. Uh, she's got definite stockholders, people that are going to report in and, and, and have to have action and PR departments. She works for fucking Disney. I mean, ABC, yeah. a, a subsidiary yeah. company of Disney. And so so I, I understand why they immediately like, hey, that's fucked up. We're spending it for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. They had to do something. Right? Yes. Because PR wise, yeah. they definitely had to do something. Um, uh, will they try to get rid of her? I don't know. I don't know. Um, diversity wise, I'm going to say no. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they would touch that and try to fire a black minority uh, from their show for something that's far less egregious than things that people have been fired like Chris Matthews or, or Bill O'Reilly you know, people that have actually been fired for pretty bad things. Right. Sure. Um, sure. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that throughout my history in the last 10 or 15 years, just of personalities on TV, whenever a network suspends you, you just don't ever come back that often. Yeah. Uh, usually they're combing over your contract and seeing if they can get rid of you and what the yeah. fallout's going to be probably doing panels and groups and trying to see what would happen if they got rid of her and all this. So I, I really don't know. It'd be interesting to see again. I'll never see it, yeah. but I'll probably hear about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably hear about it now just because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, the view I know a lot of people watch it, but I think, and I'm just going to say this because it's the stiff truth. I don't think anybody of substance is a regular viewer of the view. So I I'm not really concerned with, with, um, with how much power or how much power yet, yeah, how much, how much weight is carried with the view in general. But I have to say it's, it's, it's a daytime show. First of all, you know what I yeah, mean? Was it like eight or nine in the morning? 10? I, I don't even know, to be honest with you, you'd probably have to look that up. I'm Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If, if a sh- and you know this too, if a show's not prime time on the major networks right now, if it's somewhere in between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., that's when it's just catering to people that are watching TV that usually are not working or it's just not n- noteworthy enough to have the prime time slots, which would be pretty much after six o'clock. You know what I mean? Let's just call it what it is. It's not a show that you watch when you get home from work after the evening news or anything like that. Shit. Wheel of fortune and the, and, 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 and uh, what's the other one and jeopardy are on right after the local news. Those are more important uh, if you ask me, but at the end of the day, um, you know, that's, that's kind of where it is, but yeah, the only reason that we do know about it is because this has kind of forced, um, the view and Whoopi Goldberg into the actual real primetime news cycle for a little bit, 9am, 9am, which I'm Perfect assuming time. is Easter. Yeah. 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 And that's like, it's prime time, right? See what prime I'm saying? time, like everybody's working. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I don't know how they're getting their millions of viewers, but I have an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's I'm sure. the uh, the uh, the uh, all my children. Uh, you know, hey, soap opera crew. I, absolutely, the soap opera crew. This is this is how they tee off their mornings. You know what I mean? They uh, they start with the view, then they just kind of pull out the tissues and and what have you, and, and listen to the. Well, I don't even want to know. But we just it, alienated the demographic of like sixty to eighty year old women. I just want you to know that. Oh shit! There and their husbands that are also they're, retired. There goes all kinds of views too. Oh my God, we're losing them, everybody. Luckily, well, that's like literally our smallest demographic. <laughs> let's just keep this train going, Bob. But you know what? So, and, sorry, old folks. Uh, you know the view sucks. I get with it. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a step truth right there. I mean, if you're watching the view, either you've you already given up on life during retirement, or you should fucking like apply for jobs. Like, <laughs> there's other things that you could do with your time. Do things for your your kids. Your, your children need you. Like, get off the view. What are you doing at 11 a.m. Mountain? You know, listen, if, you, if you're watching The View and you're retired, you've given up on your life and you're being a selfish motherfucker right now. Do something for your family. That's your legacy that you're leaving behind. Not Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg's opinion on stupid shit they have no, no, no right talking about. But again, they do have the right. <laughs> They do have the right. Into, I'm sorry, Whoopi, but we're going to bash the fuck out of the deal. <laughs> well, and, and that's okay. Look, again, she doesn't need to be canceled. I wholeheartedly distaste uh, and dislike the view, and that's okay. But I think a lot of people do. Moving right along, though, I just wanted to say, and I'll just close it with this. I, I apologize. I should not 
I should not jump the gun so much and, and just be so heated about silly stuff because honestly, this is how cancel culture works. And that's what really got me in a correction mode is like, wait a minute, wait a minute here. I literally just did to Whoopi Goldberg what I despise about what's been happening over the past few years for anybody that's got up and mouthed their opinion. And that's slightly gone against the grain of the, the no, mainstream. It, it was narrative. very snowflake of you, Scott. Very snowflake of me. And I apologize. I will make sure that I, that I keep my, keep my shit straight and narrow moving forward here. But I'll tell you what, something we didn't mention last week, and I don't know how we missed it, Bob, you've kind of, honestly, you've been really, really nice about this. First of all, I got to say this to you. The Washington football team has a new name. It's a horrible name, too. I'm just going to come out and say it. The commanders here is just god awful. Probably the, the silliest shit show, most pathetic piece of shit name that I've ever heard. And yet it took us two years to go ahead and craft this bad boy up. And then for a new logo, we didn't go out there and find anything creative, like a little like, you know, avatar or anything like that. We literally just took the fucking W that we were using for Washington football team, put a couple cuts in the side of it and said, bam, there you go. We are an XFL team. Look at us go here. The fucking commanders. My goodness, Bob. But when I talked to you about it, you're like, hey, commanders, you're like, that's pretty cool. And I was like, well, it's better than football team. And you're like, yeah, it's not bad. Well, I it depends your... on how they spin it, right? Because <laughs> the Patriots is a fucking terrible name for a football team, right? Uh, but Great. But now we just is... lost everybody in New England. Good job, Bob. <laughs> but, but look at their following and look at their yeah. pageantry and look at what it's become. Right. And I think there's an opportunity for the commanders to have something similar. Are they going to take it back to revolutionary time? Because before America existed, um, there was like commanders in general. Are they going to get that old school patriotic fucking commander button down, big stomach, long shirt kind of shit with the sideways hat? Like oh. maybe. I hope they don't go there. I hope they don't go there, Bob, because right out of the gate, what did those guys do? They had fucking slaves. Okay. Now we're in another problem. Now we need to cancel that name because they're slave owners and we just can't have that, Bob. I, I don't know, man. Here's the thing. I get what you're saying. And here's what pissed me off the most. Washington has nothing right now. We haven't won a Super Bowl since 1991. We barely have winning seasons ever. We've had two playoff appearances since we've been in the Super Bowl. And that's been over 30 years, right? So what you do when you come up with a name for two years, when you don't have a name, your ownership and your, and your club is being just riddled with all kinds of controversy and sexual uh, like misconducts and harassment allegations. I mean, we, we're, we're really just running our shit through the mud right now. And they, they've come up with just, it's just a lackluster, pathetic name that none of the fans like. And you're absolutely right. You could build behind this. You could build a brand around it, but you actually have to have a good, strong organization and a winning football team, which we don't have either. Right. Dan Snyder's busy, dude. Obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, he's very busy right now. <laughs> he's out there right now Googling lawyers as much as he can to try to get rid of all this litigation. But, you know, and that's the thing, bro. If, if we were a team that had the the recent dynasty, so to speak, of winning history like the Patriots or even like the Steelers or the Cowboys or something like that, you know, okay, cool. You can kind of slap any name on a winning franchise that you want. And eventually people will kind of, you know, they'll warm up to it. They're, they're going to, because it's a winning organization. And that's what pissed me off. Even I've got more. an example for that, by the way, once you finish oh, well, go ahead. Oh, well, okay. That's what, was, that's what just upset me that much more is like the name, unfortunately to the Washington uh, football team was that much more important right now because we suck so fucking bad. And because we have all this, just horrible press right now. So I don't know. It was lackluster. I'll, I'll finish with this. So it just what I want to say about it in general, they could have went with some other names. And I heard that they didn't go with a few of them that were fan favorites because of potential copyright infringement. I totally get that. Notably the red wolves, um, the wolves and like one other one, but one that I think is just perfect was the Washington Warriors. There was no copyright infringement, nothing with the Gold State Warriors. It's a totally different sport. You know, I mean, there's the San Francisco Giants and the, the New York football giants. The reason why, the only reason why they didn't want to go with it is absolute fear of, again, being canceled because they wanted to just get themselves completely far away, just like not even touch any kind of Native American heritage or anything. And and to me, I'm like, why? Well, why not pay I tribute? I think that would have been cool because it had been a little tip of the cap to the old name. Exactly. A tip of the cap to the old name. People could still not, rock their old jackets. Not racist at all. Yes, get a, get rid of like the Indian head. And what if, if, what if it to. wasn't like 
Native American at all because there's a lot of warriors out there. All Dude. right. Uh, what if it was like Aztecan or something like uh, what if they just took it, you know, uh, something a little bit different and, and made a twist on it, but then people could still kind of tie it in. And it's like, well, Redskins was a little bit little little over the top so they just they changed it subtly to warriors to make it a little bit more modern and get away from that old moniker and and move on i agree that would have been a great name we'll see and then you got washington warriors too the w the double w everyone w. likes a good uh yeah uh, uh, what's that called i don't remember uh, i'll be honest with you but yeah alliteration yeah, yeah. A, a, a lot of teams do that when they can right when they can it totally makes sense so to me, that's the biggest just, again, it's the stupidest reason not to pick the names. Like, well, you can kind of loosely say that's Native American based. Who gives a fuck? The idea of changing the name from Redskins wasn't that the team had something to do with Native Americans. Is that the term Redskins itself, it's like having a team called Yellow Skins for like an, an Asian team or something like that. It's, it's horrible in the sense, like, is I understand why certain people would be like, yeah, dude, that's just not cool, man. You can't call them the Red Band anymore. It's like, okay, cool. What about a warrior? What about a chief? What about a brave? All of a sudden, you're paying tribute now. Now you're, again, tipping the hat to, to the culture something that the natives can get behind too, but no, they went in a completely different way. I'm sure they went commanders. And here's the best part now already for short people that are obviously aren't Washington fans and people that are Washington fans are calling them the Washington commies. That's fantastic, Bob, exactly what we need for a team that represents the capital of the United States. You know what no I mean? Fix it. Winning and football and I've games. Got, I've got, I've got a theory and then I've got proof to back this theory up. Okay, I'm, I'm all ears, baby. What'll fix the Washington Commanders is to win the division next year and make a run at the Super Bowl. That's what'll fix it. That's what'll fucking fix it. Winning cures every ailment with a team. And, and to prove this, if you wind it back to 1995, the Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars, who the fuck are these new cat teams in the league? Fuck these guys. They're going to be terrible. No. Because they gave them like all the best draft picks for like two seasons. What happened within two, the second year, they were both in their respected like championship games. Was it Mark Brunel, the quarterback? Mark Brunel was the quarterback, and Jake DeLome was oh, the quarterback for daylight coming. You got a DeLome. <laughs> <laughs> so both of those teams, though, were in the AFC and NFC championship game. And because of that, everyone then embraced them because winning, everyone wants to be a part of a winning franchise. And so the name caught on, which was by no mistake from the NFL, giving them uh, though all those draft picks for the next, for the first couple of seasons, right. For the expansion. And um, they could, they developed a huge following. Uh, the Carolina Panthers like sustained it. Jacksonville fell off a little bit, but the point is, is like when they first came in the league, everyone was like, these are fucking jokes. Like you said, they sound like an XFL team. They sound like a American football league or whatever that old, Mm -hmm. uh, AFL or whatever that was back in the nineties. Um, but then once they went to the NFC championship, Oh, these motherfuckers are good. Yeah. You know, uh, I get on board with, you know, a, a good franchise. And, and then ever since then it's fixed it so if the commanders come back and and then they they have some like good games monday night thursday night national televised games and and they do well right and, and they they do well with their 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 management and their coaching and they kind of turn it around which they have a chance because they have a really good coach and, and ron Rivera, they absolutely do right so they can if they can just win i think even you i think everyone will come around Mark well, this episode, episode yeah. 85, everyone. I will definitely mark it. And I'm telling you, like, <laughs> my biggest concern here, Bob, is you're putting this all in, you're putting all your eggs in one basket, and that's the success of Washington as a football team. In football. Mind it's you. happened before. It, it has happened before, but we're not saying, like, let's see who can sexually harass the most or the best, because we can we can do that hey, right now. Hey, we got that. They are about to green light a Doug Williams movie. Wow. I didn't yeah. know that. And, really? And I, I hear that they're trying to look for Michael B. Jordan to play Doug Williams, which would be wow. fucking epic. That's interesting. Uh, I, I love it. I love it. I mean, that's something that we should hang our hat on here, right? First, first African American quarterback to win the Super Bowl, right there. You got to love that. You do got to. And it wasn't that. just a win; like they they dominated that game. Yeah, they sure did. It was well, really I, bad. I remember the Broncos getting their ass kicked and me going out at halftime to go play. 
Like, oh. <laughs> I was just like, I'm, I remember I was like eight years old or nine years old. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not watching this trash. Funny that you say that because I remember the score. And every time I go see a Broncos game, I just walk around saying the score. I'm all 42 to 10. Why I'm wearing my Redskins jersey. <laughs> any, anybody older than like 35 or 40 is like, fuck you, man. I'm like, yeah, all right, 42 to 10. I'm well, next, the time, next time next time your wife talks trash about the Cowboys, I'll just be like 52 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we have one too. When we uh, played Buffalo, that was our the last one we won. It was 36 to 24. I yeah, remember it was that like the too. first one they lost out of yeah. many. We, hey, we, we warmed them up for you guys. You know what I mean? We, we <laughs> us the and ice. the Giants. <laughs> us and the Giants and just, just about everybody else. Everyone in the, in the NFC East just slapped the Bills <laughs> around for half a decade. Uh, wasn't, <laughs> hey, wasn't that a good time, though, when we weren't the NFC least? We were like the NFC beast at, at one point, which, you know what? All this football talk here, tomorrow's a big day, baby. Tomorrow's the day. It is Super Bowl day. And We've talked about it before. We're kind of pulling for both teams here, Bob. I mean, let's face it. It'd, it'd be fantastic. Is that just us hedging our bets so we don't have to deal with a loser? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> and that way we can that way we can be right with, with whatever plays out. You know what I mean? It's we love being right. We Absolutely. Do. There's nothing better than being right. Um, but I'm telling you what, if, if Burroughs can, can take the team with Jamar Chase and they can just have that, that ultimate comeback story, the ultimate underdog story, I'm going to be super pleased. But on the flip side, if Matty Stafford, after his stint he put in in Detroit, finally gets, you know, you can a call win. it what it is, dude. It's a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's like when he gets drafted he's like matthew stafford to the uh, detroit lions you're like why what did i do i thought i played well you're like, right, you're right. And, and then he did a dime piece there and two <laughs> all right <laughs> but look, 12, 12 years in san quentin detroit fresh out of his recent suspension yeah <laughs> he's he's back <laughs> baby matty stafford <laughs> so so either way i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a please guy tomorrow which i was I can't remember who I was talking to the other day, but I was like, dude, I haven't felt so optimistic about either verdict to the Super Bowl like this. I want to say more than a decade. You know what I mean? It's been more than a decade where I've actually got to the Super Bowl and thought, wow, man, I don't care who wins. This is going to be just a fun game. Usually, I'm usually just pissed off somebody's there. Usually, it was Tom yeah, Brady I, or the and Patriots. Yeah, I was going to say normally it's the Patriots because a right. third of that time was Tom Brady. What was the Patriots, or it was somebody else really annoying too? And then you right want now, the Patriots to lose, and they rarely ever did. Right, so, so you'd be you'd be disappointed. <laughs> so you're fact, always rooting for the loser. That sucked. I'll tell you what. The last one that I was pretty pumped about, whoever won is when the Colts played the Saints and the Saints won it. I think in 2009, oh, man, that, was, that was a good one, right? I, I think that was like farther back. That was 2006. Something like that. It was, way. The, it was the year of Katrina, which was 2005. And so that Super Bowl would have been the very next year in 2006. Let me look. And then we're all like screaming conspiracy. Like, oh yeah, the Saints, Saints happened Colts, to win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Like, I'm, just, I'm just looking it up though, because I do remember seeing it. No, 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 no. This, that was 2010. 2010? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. The only reason why I had to fact check you on that is because I watched it in Denver with a buddy of mine, and I just moved here. So I was like, it had to be after 2009. But I think you're talking about 2006, 2007. That's when the Colts beat the Patriots, right? Or I, No, the Colts beat, who'd they beat? Because they beat the Patriots to get there. Either way, what I'm saying, though, is that's the last one in 2010. I was like, I'd want to see Breeze win. And then, you know, my part of my family's from Indianapolis. So I was like, I love Peyton Manning, too. I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset if they won. And Breeze ended up winning that one. It was fun. It was a good time. But almost every single one since then, I've been upset about something. But I want to ask you this, Bob. We are obviously going to be pleased as punch no matter what tomorrow because it's the biggest the biggest day in professional football. There's going to be a lot of a lot of great food, great commercials, and great uh, just great competition. Great here. halftime show. Oh Jesus Christ! The best halftime show we've had in the longest time too. I don't think I've ever been excited about a halftime show. To be honest, I, I, mean, I don't give a shit about Aerosmith when they played and what all that. No, bullshit. Prince was really good, but That's I wasn't true. excited about it yeah. uh, until I watched it. And I was like, holy shit, Prince! You just like rocked our minds out. That was pretty badass, right? In the rain and shit. Like, like in wow. The, in the rain playing purple rain. Come on now. You know, yeah, what I, mean? you, I you don't can't... know. Like, I can't think of another time that I've actually been anticipating a halftime show like this. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just wondering how they're going to pack all of this into such a little time. There's so many superstars. They're going to have to do like this huge collaboration song and call it a day. You know what I mean? That's like, they're going to have to be really creative with it. But let me ask you this though. 
what do you really think is going to happen here? Not what you're wishful thinking here, but who's going to win? We got to know, Bob, wh- what's going to happen. Give us a score. We're going to look back on this and see who was closer. So what do you got, baby? I think that both offenses are going to struggle. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Um, but in the end, I think that Cooper Cup's going to bail the Rams out. I think it's going to be something like 23-17 Rams. Uh, I'm sorry, Mikey, uh, just my football analytics and a, and a young quarterback against that defense that's not young, that has Super Bowl experience all over the place. Uh, I, I just, I think that in the end, I'd give the edge to the Rams. If I was putting money on it, I, I'd give the spread like six, right? Uh, but, you know, strange things happen, right? Uh, and th- this, this Bengals team is scrappy, and we've seen it in the AFC Championship game. Wow, what heart. Right. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I just, I think that that Rams team is going to get a lot of pressure on Burrow. Uh, he's, he's going to struggle to find out what to do with it. Right. Mm-hmm. He's going to struggle trying to read that defense and audible at the line and, and read the pressure. I think he's going to do the things that young quarterbacks do. And I think that defense is going to do the things that that good veteran defense is doing the playoffs. Right. And, and on the other side, I think they have the wild card of they have Cooper cup and Odell Beckham's playing great. But more yeah. importantly, like Odell kind of keeps you honest with Cooper. You can't yeah. just throw half of your team in the secondary on Cooper Cup because Odell Beckham's running around. And if you do that, he's going to catch 10 to 12 passes. So I, I, I just think they kind of have the recipe where they have all the boxes checked and where they have outs and exit strategies where if you block something, they can beat you another way. Whereas I don't think the Bengals are quite that balanced. But again, I do think that it's going to be a great game, and 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 I'm I'm, I'm polling for the Bengals. I want to see the Bengals win. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I also do want to see the Bengals pull this upset here. And honestly, their receiving core is pretty badass. I mean, Tyler Boyd is their number three. Their number three. That's pretty fucking impressive, if you ask me. Just just last year, he was the man there. You know what I mean? So, I think their offense is poised, and and they can do it. There is the there is the concern of the pressure from Aaron Donald and Von Miller though. And then everybody else, I mean, just those two guys alone can create some havoc, but you know what? Look what they didn't do against Tom Brady. You know what I mean? When they were coming back, there is some holes in this defense and the Rams do have a little bit of the whoopsies here and there doing some they crazy, really do, right? some crazy, stupid, uncharacteristic shit at the absolutely worst possible time. So with that being said, it is a wild card game to me. I, I literally think if Matthew Stafford doesn't throw any picks, they win that game. That's This is what I think. You know what I mean? If he fumbles it, causes a fumble or something like that, or if they fucking hike it over his head again or something, or you know anything like that, if there's a bunch of gaffes there on the offensive side that just like, hey, let's give away this game, then I don't think, I don't think the Bengals need any help. They'll just take one of those fuck ups and they'll, they'll win the game. That's, that's kind of how I see it. Um, but with that being said, I would have to go the same route here. I'd have to be a stat man here and say, Hey, if I'm putting my hard earned money and a lot of it up right now, I'm going to say that the Rams slightly have the edge here, which is everybody they got on the team. The stats line up. Um, it's going to be a close game. I think it might be a little bit higher scoring game. So I might give it like a, Let's give it like a, a 31 to 27 or 20, you know, 30, 31 to 28 game. There we go. I like that. Let's do that. Let's do like by, by a field goal or something like that. Um, but I'm interested to see if I'm wrong because I will actually be happy if I'm wrong as well. But I just, I have a sneaking suspicion here that maybe this is the time that Matt Stafford and the Rams don't fuck this up. And if it comes down to a kick, as goes the Bengals all day. Oh, dude, dude. Nick all Pearson day. is the, the official stiff truth's favorite kicker in the NFL. If, if it comes to <laughs> if it comes to a kick and there's a potential for the Bengals to win the game, I say Joe Burrow and McPherson both light up cigars while the clock is still ticking and <laughs> just have that kind of confidence. He goes out there with a stogie and a scotch. He's like, hold this, hands it to the defense. <laughs> I'm about to crush no, your dreams. No, no. <laughs> he's no, he he. He gives his scotch to the guy that's holding the kick. You know, he's like, he's like, here, here, hold my scotch too. Hold the ball with your other hand. Let's go. Let's get this done real quick. But no, I, I really think if it comes down to something like that, then I'm going to start screaming. Oh, the Bengals got this. They got this, but it could get ugly. Meaning if they put some pressure on Burrow and they actually find a recipe to make it consistent throughout the game, then like you said, I think he's going to have a little bit of like a newbie itis kind of thing. You know what I mean? He's just probably not going to know what to do. Um, what's well, tough I, with the Rams, Scott? Because them picking up Miller, I think, was huge. 
it was so big for them because Aaron Donald causing a double or triple team in the middle, especially in those pass plays and putting that pressure right at the middle, even if he's double teamed, yeah. right? It leaves you with less guys to block the rest of their line. But now that you have Von Miller and his hall of fame rush from the outside coming, it really puts pressure on any quarterback in that situation. So, you know, a young quarterback like Burrow, um, I, I just don't know. Now, I will say that the Bengals are the more disciplined team. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I agree. Who do you want to win? The Bengals, 100%. 100%. So, it, it just so, because I know right now, the number one stiffy we got out there, Mr. Mike Lenz, right now, he's, he's probably either cussing when he hears this, <laughs> yelling at us, calling us r- pathetic dirtbag losers, schmoes, whatever. He's right. You're right, Mikey. You're right. But just remember this. We're, we're not talking right now with our hearts here. We're talking like analytically. And like, if we had to kind of remove the emotion from this game, we, we both think that the Rams have the slight, the slight edge. We're not saying it's going to be a blowout or anything like that, but both me and Bob are going to be wearing our, our, our tiger striped cheerleading outfits and pom-poms uh, tomorrow. I and, almost and, bought a bangle balloon today. Oh, you they should had little like bangles helmets at the store when I was there. And I was just like, oh, I should get one of those. But then I Mike. just kept living my life. <laughs> <laughs> and as we lift Mike up, we smack him in the face. <laughs> well, I just I'm really excited to have a game that I just want to see a really good game. I think this right? is it. I want to see those these guys fight to the bitter end. And both of these teams have been doing it all year long, all playoffs mm-hmm. long. Uh, and, I, and I just want to see the same thing. I'm going to get pretty bummed out if it's like a, a route and it just starts unfolding badly for one team because it could go like that with any team. We've seen the Bengals put the herd on some good yeah. teams this year. Oh, yeah. uh, when Jamar Chase gets it going and, and Joe Mixon just gets it going and they just start rolling, we've seen them do it. And we've seen the Rams just put the herd on. So I, I just want to see a great game. Uh, I really am not going to be too disappointed to anyone lose. I just personally, I want to see the Bengals win because for my lifetime, the Bengals have been, you know, kind of like the Cowboys are now, like the doormat yeah. of the league, right? <laughs> well, and let's face it, kind of, they've kind of been in the company of the Detroit Lions. You know what I mean? For the longest time now, for the last 30 something years, it's been like the Lions, the Bengals maybe the Browns for a while, you know, they've kind of picked it up the past five, 10 years. They've been like slowly getting back up there, but they've been at the bottom of the barrel and all of a sudden they are no more. You know what I mean? That's yeah, one so, thing so that you got to be happy about. If you don't know in the late eighties, Boomer Esiason played for the Bengals mm, and yeah, made that did. team relevant for the first mm-hmm. time in that franchise. Right. And then the, after he retired, they went dormant for like 20 years until Andy Dalton came and made that team relevant again. The red right. rocket, baby. Right. So <laughs> then they started winning him and uh, Chad, Chad Ocho Cinco. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, so yeah, baby. They, they made that team relevant. They started winning divisions and, and making playoffs. But other than those two spurts of great quarterback play, the Bengals haven't done shit. It's been tough sledding, baby. It's been real tough sledding. But hey, here we are. Let's not talk about the past anymore. Best team's going to win tomorrow. That's all I got to say. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see a good game. And you know what? I'm going to make a shitload of fucking air fried chicken wings, buddy. So I'm just happy for that, too. That's all I got to say. Nice. I've got a, a wing stop order. Uh, it, yeah, that you put in like a week in advance. Tell the stiffies. Come on. Yeah, I did. I put it in on like Tuesday or Wednesday <laughs> yeah. so that I could pick it up at 1 p.m. I wanted one Perfect. because I didn't want to wait till five because I wanted to start drinking before that during the Super Bowl day. So I wanted to get my wings early so I could get my driving done. See, there's logic in all of this. There's so, a master plan right here. There is definitely a master plan. Well, yeah, hey, we, we got the wing stops tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend, keeping it sporting here. Um, you mentioned it right out of the gate when we started uh, started the show today. But Winter Olympics has been pretty goddamn fun. Um, I'll just start with this, though. I'm going to pour one out for Sean White, you know, just, just pour one out, baby. I don't have any more drink. I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of my drink here, but poor bastard. Fifth Olympics was almost there. He literally, what do he have? He had second, right? With his run. He would get like 84, 85 or something like he that. Was second second. He got pushed to fourth mm. and then he, he was going for gold on his last oh, run. Man. Going for the gusto. He had to, he had to. Yeah. Cause he, he doesn't get bronze. He gets golds, right? So he went for gold. He fell going for it. And that was it. He finished one place out of the medal. Oh, um, but you know what? Times. It was it was pretty awesome watching Sean White since he was a kid. You know, now for 20 years, we've been watching Sean White in the Olympics at this point. Yeah. 
And uh, what a badass. Was, yeah. So, so much of a badass. He made the sport relevant. He, 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 he single-handedly brought snowboarding to the forefront of, of popularity in the whole world. Right. I mean, before Sean White was in the Olympics, you couldn't even snowboard at Taos. Yeah. <laughs> right? I remember that it was for skiers only it was for skiers yeah. only. And they still hate that. Right. But yeah. uh, he's the Tony Hawk of the sport. He transcended the sport. He, he earned God level status a, a, as a person. If there was a hall of fame for snowboard, he could be at the top of the list. Uh, first ballot hall of famer, but there's not such a thing, but he's the hall of famer in my mind. Um, he's the number one reason that I wanted to watch the Olympics. Wow. I love winter Olympics. We've talked about this in the show before. Uh, there's just so many cool things in the Olympics. Right. Um, but Sean White's half pipe was my number one reason. Well, and I also know too, you're a huge, um, huge Michaela Schifferin fan too. Huge Michaela fan. Oh, Come on, girl. tell tell everybody about tell everybody about your love so, for Michaela. So Michaela Schifferin is probably the best in her sport at, at the downhill, and um, basically filling the shoes of Lindsey Vaughn, right? Yeah, sure. Um, and she's she's been in the Olympics before. It's not like, like this is her first time. I'm pretty sure she got the gold medal last time in the downhill, uh, but this time she's been winning the world championships every year. She's still at the top of her sport expected to win gold in the downhill this time. Um, she misses the, the gate within five seconds of her first mm. run in her first event. Right. So she missed it. It happens, right. It's yeah, a sport. Yeah. And then the second one, she misses the gate within like 11 seconds. The, 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 the thing that irked me about the second one, here's where my bitch is going to come in. I want to hear it because it was funny yesterday when we were talking Is about it. Michaela Schifrin missed her gate, disqualifying herself from her second opportunity at a medal. And when she did this, she, she skied off to the side. She took her fucking skis off on the hill and just sat there like, I don't know if she was crying. I don't know, obviously, she was in shock. Whatever. She was there for 25 minutes. She was throwing a little bitch fit. That's what she, was going she on. She was throwing a bitch fit. Um, she was looking like a real pussy. Right? <laughs> there it is. Come on, Bob. get worked up. I feel like punchy in the shoulder. I'm like, come on, come on. I'm just more. saying no. that the whole world is watching and you're representing our, our country and you go there and you make it, you put in all this hard work. I understand that you're disappointed, but fuck when Sean White fell, he didn't just sit in the half pipe for half an hour. <laughs> he fucking got up. He waved to the crowd. He took his L and he moved on and showed pride. When Kayla Schiffer sat over there, her mommy came and sat next oh, to her Jesus right for 25 Christ. minutes. Literally, they waited for her and extended it so that she would move. And she never did. So the whole world was looking like, oh, look, spoiled in tight. You know, this is like, <laughs> this is why people think we're <laughs> fucking idiots, right? It's I love because. The spoiled, entitled American lost her race and just sat there in the damn way in the track on the downhill in front of everyone. They actually started running next to her because she did, she wouldn't move. Right? And it's just it was just disgraceful. It was unpatriotic. It was it was just a terrible display of, of pride. Uh, it, it was just so weak. I, I just don't I can't say it enough how bad of a look this was and how shitty of a thing it is for her to do that. Yeah. You, you spoiled little American shit. And you know, it's funny when we were talking about this yesterday, you had me laughing because you're absolutely right. And, and I love how Bob's mental image of, of, of foreigners, like the rest of the world encapsulated is a pissed off French man. Oh, every, time, every time, every <laughs> time. <laughs> he's got he's got the cigarette and the beret on his <laughs> you stupid America <laughs> always I don't know where he's spitting, but he's always spitting in something, and I love that. That that's 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 what gets Bob so infuriated too. He's like, You're making us look like shit. The Frenchies are laughing at us. Like, what are you doing over here? But seriously, bro, we do not need any help on the world stage looking like spoiled brat shitheads. You know what I mean? Let's just face it. I, the rest of the world on a whole thinks america is just like that entitled too individualistic too full of themselves too materialistic whatever right and and that kind of is exactly the wrong perception that we need reinforced so i agree with you michaela not a bit not a good look 
but hey, like you said, bro, and I and I actually watched uh, the Olympics earlier today when they were doing a recap and they were talking about Michaela like um, bouncing back bouncing back and she actually finished a run and mind you she didn't place but she came in a strong ninth showing <laughs> just like what the fuck it's ninth place <laughs> like you're supposed to be the best in the world i love then, how like after two races the bar got lower to simply finishing the race was a success <laughs> like, and she comes right back after a very frustrating run where she couldn't finish she bounces right back and and then just finishes right at the end of the pack you're like oh fantastic i'm glad we put all our chips on this girl um, but hey, it is what it is. But I, I loved hearing it from you. You're absolutely right. Chloe Kim, though, that, there's somebody that gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of press and she deserves yes, all yes, of it. Chloe, so, back to back gold. Back that, to that back is, gold, baby. That is very rare company in winter or summer Olympics. Yeah, join it. Jay, you know, she's she's falling right in uh, old Sean's footsteps on the other side of it for for her gender there. But she was well, she's, she's now great. one one gold medal away from tying him. Yeah, well, I, did you, I don't know if you watched that, but dude, she is like, she's like three or four feet higher on on what she can get on air versus all the other chicks in in the competition. She, For now, Scott, if you remember back yeah. in two thousand eight, Sean White was the same way. Yeah, well, what 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 she's doing right is she's digging her own grave in the future. You know what I mean? Like, there's some little girls, preteen girls, right now being inspired watching her in other countries or any of our country and be like. That's what I want to do because Chloe Kim is my inspiration. And that kid, it's going to be like the young Padawan Lurder, so to speak, uh, if you want to use some Star Wars kind of stuff here. But they're going to come up and, and they're going to defeat the master here in, in the next Olympics or two. But you're absolutely right. But, hey, God bless her. She's doing great right now. Who's the guy to um, male figure skating that that won for us too? Uh, Ma- Michael, to Michael Chen? Michael Chen? I was think it, that's Was right. it Michael Chen? I don't know. You better fact check me on that one, baby. Uh, well, um. So uh, to your point of Chloe Kim, she's yeah. 100% setting herself up to be dethroned because yeah. John White did the same thing. Uh, in fact, this kid, uh, Ayumu Hirano, was the guy that won gold this year. Nathan 23- Chen. Did you, did you Nathan. say Nathan Chen? I said that, Michael. That's what it is. I said Michael. Oh, we're sorry, Nathan. We knew your name was not Michael. We just thought of something that sounded similar to Nathan, and Michael's pretty close. Kind I should have remembered Nathan's hot dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, the top dogs, figure skating. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, Jesus, the wow. kid that beat Sean White was like again, like eight years old or something. When Sean White got his first oh, medal, the, the Japanese kid that won, right? Yeah. And, and so, uh, much like Chloe Kim, I 100 percent agree. I think that I think that she's inspiring the the people that are going to be taken around. Now, maybe not. Maybe she's just like, oh, I got two gold medals. I'm just going to retire. Like. I got, I got life to live and, you know, maybe, but, um, yeah. Nathan Chin laid down like the nastiest performances, the most dominating perfection that we've seen in probably any sport in quite some time. Like he just went, he was expected to do the well, he was expected to win. Uh, and he not only won, but he just went and just he he won with so much perfection and precision and and it just laid it down and dominated. It was pretty intense. So he didn't pull a Simone Biles. Oh, I just no, did that. no, he participated in the Olympics. <laughs> Oh, too, too soon, too, too soon. soon, way too soon. Go take some Xanax, honey, and chill out. It's okay. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Continue, Bob. So um, if you looked at his short performance, uh, his his short. Uh... Wait, he was wearing short shorts out there? I got to see this. I did not totally. see that. Totally. <laughs> so he, he did his short program, and um, I think he set an Olympic record for score in that That's thing. Awesome. And that put him up like eight points overall for the for the overall win when it came time to do like his long program so and then he went and laid down you know some more perfection and and this dude you know he just throws quads around like like nobody's business he lands them every time and they're perfect they're high they're strong and i mean i'm sorry to gawk at me for figure skating but i'm a fan of figure skating ever since sean hamilton was doing backflips uh in the late 90s i've always kind of kept an eye on these well, these flamers running around in their figure skating outfits, you know. Sorry, there he goes. It only took <laughs> but, you a little bit of time. Just to- <laughs> it's so impressive. <laughs> it's so impressive, and uh, 
and I don't think they get enough credit for being athletes because I think that male figure skaters get put in the category of dancers. Well, and the 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 athleticism that it takes to to pull off what they're doing uh, is so incredible. I, I I just think they deserve much more run on the overall scale of athletics than they get, which is like, cool, we got a medal in figure skating. This guy's pretty awesome. Yay. No, it's more than that. These guys have like, like verticals that rival slam dunk champions in the NBA, you know, and yeah. just, I no, just don't think they get enough credit. So I agree a hundred percent, Bob. And I'll tell you this, I was thinking about it. Um, I was thinking about it yesterday, I think when I was watching figure skating and I agree with you too. I'm not even, I'm not ashamed to admit it at all. I think, I think figure skating, um, men's, women's couples, you know, all that stuff in the Olympics is fucking probably the most entertaining to watch i think i think i'm gonna go ahead and say this i think like to do like a routine take like the most skill and practice of 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 anything in the winter olympics it's definitely mind-blowing what they can do but what i was thinking about bob was something not male figure skaters you think you think gay you think like you said flamers or whatever i'll tell you what though the straight figure skater that guy's getting all the chicks, dude. That guy is on fucking touchable. That guy is like a machine, if you ask me. You know what I mean? So you got to watch out for those guys because say what you will about like bodybuilders and actors and models and things like that. The straight like gold medal winner figure skater is taking all your fucking chicks. That's all I'm going to say. You like that? I do. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Well said. This is like Derek Huff. Is he gay? I don't know. But if he's not, he's smashing. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Hide your moms, your daughters, and your wives because the, 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 hot, the hot male straight figure skater is coming through and he's going to leave a nasty wake in his path. So just, just watch out, buddy. But here's the other thing here, just to pivot a little bit. I just got to say this here. Like, I want to figure out, Bob, where can we go watch curling in the United States when it's not the Olympics? Where are these hidden like speakeasies where people do curling and, and we can't find I them? really think you have to like like search out their events and go travel and watch them. I, I mean, they're not televised. I mean, very rarely. You'll see it on like the Ocho every year when uh, the Ocho comes out for ESPN2. But so, uh, you'll see it curling like, and like kind of like, like traveling carnivals and stuff like that. Like you have to like follow the crowd or something. You got to like find the in crowd. I, I'm not sure how it works. I was just I just honestly have never seen curling competitions anywhere. And then here we are just plastered on the TV for hours and hours. All these countries with these top cur curling champions. I don't know about you, bro. Don't get me wrong. It's slightly entertaining in the sense where I see there's a game going on. I see that. I see there's some kind of strategy. I see if there's points to be had. I still don't wholeheartedly understand it. I don't, I know you're supposed to knock their balls out of there, out of the little fucking bullseye and shit like that. But then like something happens bad. <laughs> what's happening here. I don't understand what's going on. So it's just a very strange sport. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen, I've never seen a, a curling competition advertise. Yeah. That's tough. So, it's a good point. I, I don't know. Hmm. What, what do you watch a curling competition? I don't know, but if any of the stiffies know, they need to chime in and let us know what's going on here because I'm very interested in the underworld belly, the 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 the, the back alley competitions that is curling in the United States because it's not something that they broadcast or advertise on on normal television. That's all I got to say. Well, um. Anyways, I think the other well, thing that that's coming to is is hockey, and I and I haven't haven't really caught any because I, I tend to like try to avoid the round robin in hockey and wait until like you know the the quarterfinal starts and then I start paying attention yeah. to hockey. Um, I know that women's hockey is kind of rolling right along again. They had uh, won the gold medal last time, so. So they're expected to reap it. And uh, I know the men's hockey is always right there with Canada and Russia. There's pretty much the three countries that always are fighting for the gold in men's hockey. So um, 
and I'm not quite there yet uh, with everything, but I, I do like to to chime in and watch the luge and skeleton and these crazy fuckers in like the super G downhill that are hitting like 90 miles an hour on skates or ice or blades or what have you. Uh, Olympic sports crazy. Um, let's not get any qualms about it. Jess is like, I want to watch the ski jump. And I'm like, okay. So I pull up the ski jump because I'm a nerd, dude. I've been recording everything. Every event in the Olympics is recorded in its archive. So uh, we watched the ski jump and yeah. we were getting down, watching these people jump just halfway down a mountain. Uh, so that's been entertaining. But one thing I, I do notice is that my son is 15. He has no understanding at the significance of the Olympics. And I think some of that is how when we were growing up in the 80s, in the 90s, um, there wasn't really internet around, right? Uh, it was when the Olympics came on, no. everyone stopped what they were doing. It was primetime television. Everyone circled around their TV every fucking night and watched every competition of the Olympics. And it's just, it was very common. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that I did as a kid and my whole family did. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there was yeah. like Dan and Dave cards and tradables and shit going on and, 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 and uh, uh, Jackie uh, Kersey, Jackie Joyner Kersey. Uh, I think is her name, uh, you know, the summer Olympian. Uh, there's just so many, like, there's so much more marketing, I think, that went towards the Olympians uh, and just towards the Olympics in general, that now that in the, in the cord cutting era, um, where there, there are so many options of entertainment in the evening, I think the Olympics have lost a lot of steam in the prestige and the pageantry uh, coming to the next generations. Like my son is like, why are you always watching the Olympics? And I was like, cause it didn't happen since you were like 11 years old. Like he's you like, should care about this. Why do you not care about this? He's like lame boomer. You know what I mean? You no, know, for seriously. real, for real. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I, I don't, I doubt, I don't have a lot of data, but I doubt that that's uh, a dissimilar stance that most of his peers are taking. I mean, most of them probably don't give a shit and, and, and it's kind of sad. And I'm wondering where Olympics are going to go in the future. If there's no marketability with the younger generations, you know, it's interesting that you say that as I, as I reflect a little bit, the last person that I saw as an Olympian just plastered everywhere for good reason was Michael Phelps. And oh, it's been course, a while yeah. now. It's been That's a while. Time, great Olympian right there. But he was like on every commercial for a while. He was doing all kinds of cameos everywhere. He was on you know, everything. Um, and since he has retired, um, I really haven't seen anybody carry that torch. Now, honestly, there hasn't been anybody really like him at all at the Olympics. But no, nah, that dude um, had like 20 some medals. It's pretty cool. Dude. Yeah, when he's wearing them all on his neck, it's that's I mean, it's like, hey, Tom Brady, eat your fucking heart out. You know what I mean? It's like take your fucking rings and shove them up your ass. Dude. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. Michael Phelps, one of the best athletes in the history of sport. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think so enough run either. If you have to, if you have to kind of sum things up in the sense of Winter Olympics, we talked about Winter Olympics, Summer Olympics here. What that. is, or is the half pipe, the snowboarding half pipe, your favorite event now in the Winter Olympics? Or no, what do you have? No, it's have to not my favorite to? event. It's just that Sean White was my favorite athlete. Well, tell me, tell me your favorite. You know, what, so what's your, what's your number one, baby? For the Winter Olympics, oh man, that's tough. There's a lot. Um, I really like speed skating. Uh, I, I really like, I really mm -hmm. like the half pipe. I really like snowboard cross. That's, that's some brutal shit mm -hmm. right there. The snowboard cross and the luge is, is always my favorite. Uh, uh, and I, I like watching the skeleton, of course, you know, head first luge, but, um, I think when it's all said and done, it's probably why Michaela Schifrin bothers me so much. Uh, I think that the slalom and the downhill skiing and the super G are mm -hmm. some of my favorite events to watch. Um, there's a combination of, of just perfection that, that you have to achieve and a lifetime of learning and training and, and everything that goes into that, that I think the, the, the 90 mile an hour times and the precisions and the crazy jumps that they're doing on the way down there has always kind of captured me. I, I learned how to ski long before I ever learned how to snowboard. So I just grew up a skier first, even though I don't ski anymore, I snowboard, but, um, I would have to say that the the skiing competitions are probably my favorite in the, the Winter Olympics. How about you? Okay. I like that. 
figure skating. I think I they score it that much outside of just the look and the style and everything. Like that, but I think that's probably if I ha- if I have to think about what I remember just watching the most and been like maybe it was like the other family members that were involved with me probably figure skating dude believe it or not so i think i think that's probably number one for me with just uh overall entertainment value for winter olympics i love them all though i think they're all great but there we go well i think i think we're like way out of time i think we're just about there i think it's perfect i think we wrap it up now and um I don't know. Uh, I can't, I can't think of really much else here besides tomorrow's going to be a, tomorrow's going to be a blast, Bob. We're going to have a great time. Uh, everybody's going to have a great time out there, regardless of who wins tomorrow, everybody's going to be happy except for Mike Lenz. If the Bengals don't win, I can go ahead and say that with confidence right well, now. We'll take shots and add some tanks. <laughs> I say we do some TikTok drinking tomorrow. All right. Absolutely. Well, Hey guys, thanks for joining us. It's been a blast, Bob, as always love, love chatting with you. This is, this is really so fun guys. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. There's been a lot more traction on the the YouTube channel. We love seeing that guys get on there, check us out on the podcast platforms. If you don't want to see our ugly faces, which I totally understand. And until next time, guys, we love you. We'll see you soon. Like, and subscribe. Boom. See ya.